Good afternoon. Phil Lindemann with your Crystal 93 News from Mountain Comfort Furnishings and Design. Durango Mountain Bike Pro Howard Grotz was injured today on the 6th and the final day of the Breck Epic. He was rushed off the course with undisclosed injuries. We had a medical situation, and sometimes things get shaken up, and the people who are supposed to come across the line first don't. That was race director Mike McCarthy. It's mountain biking. It's a dangerous sport. But the good news? Everyone's going to be fine. Our county and community's system of medical care locked into place like a precision Swiss watch. It was amazing. The past two days have been wild for the Breck Epic men's field. Before today, Grotz was in the lead by over 10 minutes. Yesterday, the second place rider, Durango's Riley Amos, dropped out. His body was having a hard time with the altitude. It was reacting strangely, and he's got a World Cup to get to. You know, he just opted out, which is the smart thing to do. This left the field wide open for Yeti rider Zach Calton of Utah. He claimed the men's in the overall title. Finishing 13 minutes behind him in second was Evergreen's Robbie Day, racing for the Bear National team. Taking third, Kona rider Corey Wallace out of Alberta, Canada. Holding firmly onto the women's lead all week long from stage one was Juliana Pro Casey Armstrong of Tennessee. Chasing her all week in second was Durango's Ellen Campbell, riding for Specialized. Pulling the upset for third place, it was Montana's Stella Hobbs with Great Northern Cycle and Ski. Until yesterday, she'd been chasing Andrea Dvorak of Longmont. Race director McCarthy again. You know, they went after each other, hammer and tongs on course. And then when it was over, it was over. You know, they're all hanging out and, you know, it's the finish. They're spraying champagne on each other. It's so cool. And checking in with our locals, Breck's own James Adamson. He was second in the men's 40-plus division. In a way, it's like you, you're you not as powerful up here. So I'm looking forward to kind of seeing how I'm performing up here against these, you know, world-class athletes, pitting myself against them and see how these Breckenridge locals are holding up. That was Adamson before the race started, talking about altitude and injury. Coming to Keystone tomorrow is the one-day-only Mountain Town Music Festival, where festival favorites Salida Circus are back. Laura Hart with Salida Circus loves coming to Keystone, where you are part of the show. We like to pull up kids. We like to pull up adults in our shows and just our roaming performance and do a lot of crowd interaction. She's bringing jugglers, stilt walkers, acrobats, and more. It's fun to be a part of it, to be be the prop in someone's act or hand the ball or be the one that gets jumped over. You can see Salida Circus performing for free between the live music, also free on the main stage, Freddie Jones Band, and the Runaway Grooms. Summit County is confirming the first rabid bat of summer. The bat was found in a Silverthorne home. No people or animals were infected. Last year, around this time, a visitor at a Keystone condo was bit by a rabid bat. The person recovered. If you believe a diseased bat is on your property, call Animal Control. Local fire danger is moderate today in Summit. Still no fire restrictions heading into the weekend. In sports, the Rockies open a weekend series with the Padres today, 640. And in local sports... Summit Ice Sports Season, it's here. Tomorrow, boys soccer has a home scrimmage with Air Academy. The Tigers golf team, they've already played in three tournaments. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.